Hi everyone, this is Ramanuj here on an hour with Law Seco from iPeters, and I have with me Abhira Agarwal, my co-founder, and we are going to talk about how we offer our courses. A lot of people ask us, you know, what is it that you do in your courses, and why should we join? Or if you are, if you like, you know, what's really the secret sauce? And we are going to share today all of it very openly. Anybody can learn from it. <laughs> and of course the good thing about it is that what you will be sharing you can do it on your own you don't have to do one of our courses to actually learn this or to apply this in your life you can pretty much do it on your own but yes if you want our help you are most welcome so don't think that if you are not interested in our course this is completely irrelevant to you this will still be relevant provided uh, for you to learn from what we have learned over the last 7 years about teaching law online and uh, creating some of the extraordinary lawyers who are doing fantastic things from being law partners to in house counsels to litigating successfully in different courts across india and even international students for that matter so okay let's get started up you there so uh, you are the one who is behind all of our uh, online courses and you are the pretty much the person uh, who runs these courses in a way designs these courses there is a role i play but it's mostly in your hands as the person who is in charge of uh, content research content development content research and development basically and creating new courses creating new designs creating exercises for students to uh, work upon uh, creating uh, new innovative ways of teaching and learning so why don't you start and tell us uh, about the basic like what is the basic philosophy of how you think somebody can learn the law right so uh, hi everyone it's good to be back here on an hour with law seco with all of you uh, so the first thing that's important when you when we create a course is to identify how can somebody what ca- what is required by people in the market or in the world what kind of what is expected of some Uh, in that area so if it is on let's say labor laws we will look at what is the struggle that people that businessmen companies organizations or even individuals face with respect to labor laws uh, and then so first is an inquiry into that related to different aspects and we find out what are actually the problems that people are facing these are not so we cannot do this just by going through law textbooks or going through the bare act also we need to first start with identifying what the problems are and that exercise is a uh, pretty elaborate it involves speaking to uh, people working in companies judges lawyers uh, compliance professionals cas cs uh, business owners hr managers all of them okay because and we need to include their perspectives because that is how uh, people perceive labor law and we say that okay we are starting this course on labor law so we need to train people on how to solve problems that are faced here so unless they can perform certain tasks or solve certain problems a course would not be serving you know its full potential so our intention is that now when we at first started making courses back in 2012 uh we started with identifying who are the industry experts who can share their practical insights and our courses had a huge amount of focus on practical insights knowledge skills and all of that so uh, this was the first phase that we explored and we have been doing this right up till uh the past couple of months when we introduced some new changes so ramunish do you want to break this down into questions because i can then take this uh, uh, in, in a more elaborate manner so right from where we started then the introduction of i leaders club that was the second phase with a lot of mentoring and all of that and then now the third phase where we've got our law seco diplomas where the focus has amplified on real life exercise uh, real life and simulation exercises that people perform so let's sort of break this down into these three okay so in my opinion before we go into like how we have developed it over time i think more what is most relevant that we should share about right now is that what is the gap basically when you go to a law college we we are familiar with it that when you go to a law college there you do learn about something very important which is 
different statutes there are sections and case laws around those statutes which is an yes. you are expected to learn every time you don't end up learning uh, it in its full scope like when you study intellectual property laws even people are not familiar thoroughly with the bare acts and the rules themselves or you study labor laws you learn a few concepts but let's not confuse a simple concept it's like yeah i understand people find it really hard because statutes are hard to learn but yeah. yes, at most let's say you fully achieve your potential in the law college you have done everything you are supposed to do we are complicating in that direction that whether you have done your work in the law college or not assume that you have done it mm-hmm. what you have done is that you have learned sections and case laws let's say you are the most brilliant guy in the class and you have memorized the entire mullah and mullah and avtar singh for companies act and know all the sections by heart of relevant you know statutes however that does not prepare you that does not prepare you at all for the work that you will be doing at a law firm or in a company or when you start litigating right it is as simple as that and what is that work for example if it is contract law that we are talking about let's say i was just giving an example to somebody on the phone uh, let's say that uh, there is an agreement between vijay shekhar sharma who is founder of paytm <laughs> and google okay that uh, in case google buys paytm then vijay shekhar sharma will be compensated and paid 50 crore rupees okay now you have section 30 wagering contracts in your contract act now what happens is that you have studied that section you have studied a couple of cases about wagering contracts also and you know what is the definition of wagering contract and all of that now the question is is this a wagering contract and vijay shekhar sharma before signing this agreement or google before signing this agreement let's say you are a counsel for google and they want to know that is this agreement enforceable what do they need to change to make this agreement enforceable this is a real kind of work that this is not a this is a hypothetical example but this is the kind of work you do as a lawyer day in and day out so i gave this example of section 30 because it's anybody who has done the contract act even like a month or two would know this section you know so i'm asking that you know would you actually know and the answer i ask this to many people and the answer is usually sorry i don't know what the hell i mean i can't make any connection now what happens in a law college is that you learn things from that perspective you are learning it from the perspective of okay this is a section then what kind of cases happen around this section what happened and by the way when you are studying case law especially a decision by the supreme court you are reading about what was important to it, the kind of disputes that used to happen 20 years back because for that case to go up to the supreme court it has gone through maybe high court then lower court then high court then supreme court they have taken their time to decide such a matter and it's like you know Uh, if you want to let's say about derivatives okay let's say you are learning about derivative contracts which is a form of contract now if derivative contracts you want to know about it and you read supreme court judgments then there is one judgment some uh, you know one judgment is there but this judgment of the supreme court where like these cases where bunch of cases were filed 20 30 years back in the 1990s maybe these cases were filed by different banks which eventually got decided it took 10 years 15 years for supreme court to decide it's not like 15 the supreme court didn't take 15 years but from the conception of the dispute to for it to go to the high court get decided get appealed and multiple like you know prop you know interventions it all took finally like when it is being taught in college it has been 15 20 years now in the last 10 years everything has changed nobody enters into that kind of derivative contract anymore like that the derivative contracts have completely evolved and you know it's def- it's different you by learning that case law you are not learning anything which is relevant today anymore you are so you are studying history basically by studying so also, i believe a lot of the supreme court case law on derivatives is about you know the legal validity of derivatives themselves whether they are wagering contracts and those things which are which are the first fundamental conceptual questions but after that what that becomes the question that how are these being used every day today can't hear you ramanuj you went I mean, that is 
that is absolutely true and your clients will pay you for telling them what to do today not for some 20 year old gyan and so this is one big problem with the legal academia today right and right. Uh, obviously it is a unpalatable truth your law teachers won't be happy when we say all these things but you don't have to take my word for it you can always go and talk to real practitioners in the uh, in, in the law firms also there's a word of caution here the thing is that everybody is used to this system where you learn uh, you learn the section and the case law and then you go and practice even your seniors who are practicing now in law firms they haven't been taught by us they have also followed the same system and then they learned on their own maybe they have learned from their senior so what usually happened is that lawyers learned from other lawyers after they graduated or do you before graduation if they were smart enough to do a lot of internships running internships rolling internships whatever you call them like over a period of time for a long period in a single place then they learned a lot from their seniors in the kind of work that the senior was doing and that is what made them get opportunities and succeed in their career and even afterwards how do you become a good lawyer you do some work as a lawyer whatever you can understand whatever you can do and then a senior lawyer looks at it and gives you feedback and you learn from it and next time you improve and this is a process that goes on for a few years eventually you emerge as a good lawyer this is the basic way that lawyers are created today like you know how does a good lawyer get created in india okay you learn the basics you learn the sections you learn the case laws in college maybe you are a very brilliant student you learned all of that maybe you did not doesn't matter after a point of time then what happens you graduate you start struggling even if you get a big law firm job you struggle for the first couple of years because you are trying to do the work and learn at the same time so there is somebody senior who's teaching you right somebody senior is kind enough to teach you you're lucky enough to find a senior like that then great otherwise you are in trouble so you must switch job to find somebody like that literally that is how it works and if you do find somebody and they teach you over the over a period of time you learn the craft of lawyering you learn the art of lawyering that is how things have been working now can we short circuit this what what are we doing to change this up there yeah so the traditional process is has been this as you've correctly put it now what we are doing is so we are questioning that whether is it necessary to learn only you know firstly after you graduate do is it necessary to learn through this kind of on the job only when you're on the job through some senior there is so much element of chance only certain people who are lucky to find such people uh, as mentors are able to learn from those uh, from them also uh, so what if you could actually aggregate all these possible insights from practitioners together okay and you could acquire them early on itself when you are studying in college what kind of a, what kind of abilities would that give you that is the question we started asking okay and would that enable you to perform better at internships excel at interviews and how to do that this is the question we we started exploring okay and our courses started being designed on that so for example if we want to teach customs law we spoke to somebody who actually has been a customs commissioner and who has who knows the customs processes inside out so he can share not only just the text of the law but actually how a customs officer operates when there is an when there is a issue of let's say levying a duty uh, or when we we had to make a uh, we had to develop the course on labor laws we spoke to hr managers asking them that what are the challenges you face in your type of organization okay then we looked at okay what is we looked at a variety of perspectives so hr managers is one then looking at okay we checked with companies are they actually what are they doing to comply with the applicable labor law framework and we found huge huge gaps there like you know it is completely broken and uh, for example i'm giving you example of how it works with labor law and there is this whole network there are two kinds of things one can be a network of labor law consultants who know everything and they charge exorbitant rates but that knowledge is inaccessible to everyone because labor laws in india are different for many labor laws in india are different from in every state and many of them are not accessible the other way is that you know companies just get notices from 
for violations and then they try to settle it informally and that's their routine method of getting away from this every year okay but they are not genuinely complying with it so now these kind of extremities we saw and then we thought okay what kind of a system can we build to make this area work actually okay now if these skills are learned by people while they are in uh, while they are in college or when they are some of them okay take these courses up when they are practicing then what kind of value can they add to organizations because when a client approaches you they look at you as a lawyer they don't say you are an expert at companies act but not in labor law they say okay you do business law or you are a corporate lawyer so anything related to their business they will uh, give you okay and at that time on the spur of the moment you should be able to talk to them about uh, about the questions they are facing about the challenges and provide some inputs at least you may not know the exact section or the full answer but you should be able to talk in their language and so that they understand that you are connected to the actual challenges they are facing like yesterday i was uh, so yesterday i was having a conversation with one of with someone who had prepared exercises on our labor law course so these exercises actually uh, simulate a real life problem that would be a situation and if you find the answer to that what will happen is that you will actually be able to solve one problem or one kind of problem that any business faces and said to that person that why don't you go and speak to somebody in your network and ask what is the problem they face and uh, and she was quite clueless that she was like how do i ask that and we did a mock conversation because that we've developed this over over the past few years and we did a mock conversation and i said to her okay this is how you speak to somebody and figure out the problems that uh, people face so we've even started giving away this process of actually identifying problems you know to to other people so that they can use this to gain insights by themselves and so this is the process we use we we ask people in in a way that they can open up and share that okay this is the problem we face otherwise you tell somebody else about how we do this and they say why would someone else share a problem they are facing and it it looks to people that we are actually grilling somebody saying that acha tell me your problems and then you rapid fire questions how do you do this how do you do this so it's not like that it's it's a lot more easier way of more it makes the other person comfortable you ask them questions on what are the issues they face and they really open up and then you know okay these are the problems that need to be solved and then we go to experts because the expert may not always be connected to the the way the client sees the problem because a lot of times if you look at so our industry is doing best to i will i will i will just reframe this a little so basically if we have to create a labor law course okay so we have to first identify what are the problems and yes. is, so how do we identify we have to speak with ceos of companies right we have to talk to manufacturing companies we have to talk to service based companies about different problems yeah. so yeah. for example we also have to cover important industries in the economy so you said manufacturing service sometimes we get into like there are certain industries which are special labor laws like mining and construction so we look at those and we look at people so operating let me, let me let me explain right so yeah. there are different uh, different uh, industries are there which have different issues labor issues uh, right. so employment employee issues so for example a minimum wages act is not relevant for most services companies for manufacturing companies sometimes they are relevant however these days in delhi because minimum wages has been hiked so much that it is becoming relevant even for white collar jobs right so there yeah. you have to know that now this is a real real life problem you need to be in touch with it so we have to be in touch with what is happening on the ground we have to know this that you know minimum wages act which was something that not even labor lawyers bothered about if they were working with a let's say a, a call center they never yeah. came into question but because minimum wages now is 15000 rupees in delhi now it has come into play you have actually uh, uh, hr managers and call centers and all sorts of companies worrying about what to pay their trainees maybe they are paying the trainees 12000 rupees and it's not is it valid right now this is something that you need to have a pulse of the what is happening on the ground for us to teach right and then right, we right. create a course and to do this we have to talk to ceos we have to talk to hr managers we have to talk to uh, ir professionals ir is industrial relation professionals we have to talk to labor inspectors 
we have to talk to even practitioners of labor law we have to talk to people who are uh, litigating around labor law and this is the basic work and this is something that you can do yourself if you want to be an expert on labor and employment issues and be one of the top lawyers this is something you do over time you have to go and talk to everybody understand different perspectives that is where your wisdom as a lawyer comes from it doesn't come from a statute book or it doesn't come from anything but these kind of wide ranging exposure however the problem is that this exposure is very difficult for most people to get you we do help them to network we do help them to go out there and start getting it for themselves because they have to learn it but we also give it to them on a platter through our courses which makes them very attractive to hire very attractive to clients because they bring this kind of knowledge this kind of wisdom this kind of insight now not only that what we would be doing is that we would be creating exercises around this right so one thing we saw abhira over the years you and i have discussed a lot about this we saw that we are offering courses where we are putting this kinds of this kind of knowledge and insight out there for people to learn and still yeah. there is a huge drop rate and we cannot be sure ourselves that how many of those people who are taking these courses giving even exams and passing those exams are actually succeeding right do you actually learn what they had to learn are they able to apply it in their life then we realize that what we are doing is that we are like this is an example i've started using a lot if i give you a swimming manual that this is how to swim a book on how to swim and you remember everything written in the book you read it you remember everything and you give an exam and you pass and i give you a certificate on that swimming manual it's fantastic you have a certificate you can write in your cv but if i throw you into the sea or even if a pond can you swim there is a huge doubt huge question mark on that and this That's is something that kept us awake at night which is why we came up with a different methodology now you will see in the law school diploma courses all of them have live classes something that goes against the grain of a startup like it's not automated it's not scalable maybe it's something that has a lot of human interface but we had no choice because if our students are not successful in the end of the day if they're dropping out even if they're successfully completing the course and we cannot guarantee that they know what we intended them to learn then it doesn't work and we solved it in a very creative way abhi they want to share that yeah yeah and uh, just one second uh, ramnu just repeat the last 15 seconds there was a noise here yeah no, no, no problem i was just saying that you know yeah, this is for now you you gave the swimming manual example and there are a couple of examples i want to add to it oh we have you know we did surveys and we started talking to our students and we realized that a lot of people are actually dropping out of the courses they paid the full money for the course yes took a course they did it with an enthusiasm for some time and we can see it from the back end that they have done the course to an extent and then they just left they just dropped out of the course they did not log back log in back again and finish it or they have done the course they have finished it they got their certificate but we are not sure about if they got the expertise that we were hoping that they will get correct that has been for a huge number of people that has been the case okay and i think the reason for that is that so there is one there, there are many passive ways to acquire insights and knowledge and learning and when you give it on a platter that is one thing right you people when they are learning it they they can learn it but i don't know if they will be capable of identifying situations when they want to when they need to apply it and then being willing to apply it it takes a certain bit of uh, energy stress and effort to apply what you've learned okay so we what we did is that we flipped the process in the exercise format what happens even in the classrooms we are actually we've broken the course we've broken the syllabus of any course down into skills okay and when any person works he usually applies multiple skills together and many people don't realize that but they are never applying one skill alone they are applying 5 10 skills combined so we broke down each exercise into uh, each part of the syllabus into micro skills and that's where we built the exercises so if you are drafting let's say an a contract to start with i've seen many people just struggle to even start typing a contract try typing one clause so what we did was that we started looking at contracts in different industry sectors 
okay and we started identifying what is the key uh, skill required to draft a specific kind of contract and five clauses for that so you're doing a manufacturing agreement let's see five clauses that you need to have in a manufacturing agreement not the usual boilerplate alone okay the boilerplate comes separately but what would be unique to somebody with whom you enter into a manufacturing agreement with with a manufacturer so we looked at five things gave that into an exercise now when you perform an exercise you'll have study materials to read okay but when you're reading them from the perspective of solving this exercise your brain is automatically going to start thinking and work okay and by the time you complete this exercise you you already know a lot about this and then next we discuss this in the next class on the feedback session and we see what are the other ways you could have done this so then you come become aware of multiple kinds of permutations and combinations you notice if there were inconsistencies in what you said uh, earlier you know in different parts of your draft are they all coherent or is there a contradiction or inconsistency are there other ways in which you can accommodate a different kind of client their interest so when that happens and you do that over and over again over uh, a period of one year so you can do this for 50 exercises and we give 50 more exercises on the platform so you can practice those and get feedback on them then when you actually complete the course you can say that you know i have drafted all these contracts i can draft these contracts and i can let you know right now in a conversation what will be important you meet someone uh, in a meeting and he does a certain kind of business you can say listen in your contract you have these four five things and that person will be floored right away now on the other hand if i just said that this is important this is important this is important it is just something you have to sit and learn okay and it will not stick in your mind so this is what we discovered and this is how we are now applying it what is happening with this is that now if somebody participates in the classes attends a class then we we are very sure that that person has really understood a uh, uh, there's a huge uh, you know gain a huge learning curve which a person bridges from participating in every class and how i like to put it you know you gave the swimming manual example and that's that puts the point across there are two other examples which are important i think for people to understand this now in in law it doesn't happen like that you know we learn through books and all of that but imagine in the airline industry pilots learn everything on the ground they can't afford to fly a plane and then make a mistake the cost of that would be huge so they learn everything on the ground through simulations and when they are flying a real plane they are ready their brain patterns are formed and you know they know that this is what they will ex they know what to expect how to deal with it now this is what happens when somebody will complete uh, these courses and every week we notice that you know people's now people in our contract drafting course are doing the fourth exercise the there is a huge difference between what they are producing now and when what happened when they did the first exercise so what's happening with them is they are getting familiar that yes i i have faced the situation before their brain patterns are set okay that is one of the a uh, background uh, philosophy behind creating these exercises the second is you should notice how uh, trainers teach martial arts okay so what happens is a lot of times we think that we'll train you in x and x plus in a, in the real life you might face x plus z and if you're smart enough if you're diligent enough if you're committed enough you will be able to figure that out but imagine a real street fight on the road is that how it happens that people who have never fought will suddenly emerge victorious in a street fight or in a karate competition it's not like that you have to practice the same thing over and over again such that it's powerful it is effective and it's masterful right so to be effective that's what's required so it's not that you are suddenly without having the necessary fundament background knowledge you are not extrapolating and creating new things you need to first be settled with what is out there already you need to learn that so in these exercises we are ensuring that bit by bit the skill is getting imparted to you because you are actually discovering this process so you don't learn something unless you do an exercise if you sit and relax and just listen to a conversation that will not make you progress so that's how these courses are designed now tamnu over to you yeah so you know uh, i mean that that makes a lot of sense especially the simulation for pilots kind of example to me i mean i mean i think that captures it very beautifully that how uh, i mean you are going to be a lawyer isn't there a better way of throwing you into the water first and then training you and if we can 
put you into a simulation uh, environment where you are prepared where you, where you are trained it, it works wonders i think you know it's it's mostly about this that when you are going to go out there there are a finite number of opportunities for which a large number of lawyers today are competing especially young lawyers and law students are competing there is a finite number of uh, opportunities from uh, law firms to jobs in good companies uh, to uh, maybe good judicial clerkships uh, llm seats like in good places of course there is a finite number of them and they are it's a highly competitive environment there are fewer client like clients number of clients are increasing of course but the number of lawyers chasing those clients or number of lawyers looking for business from those clients is also increasing drastically and there was a time when good people intelligent people did not pursue law if i read the super lawyer interviews again and again i find that same thing that you know law was not a preferred uh, career back in those days but now it is there are people who are looking to study the law they want to be a good lawyer they want to have that life there are uh, tv series like suits and boston legal or what not glamorizing the legal uh, career and young youngsters are really drawn to this career and there's the competition is highest ever like really smart and good people are coming into law which is a good thing but it is also has tremendously increased the competition like it is it is giving rise to some ludicrous situations for example a law firm like azb or uh, luthra and luthra or shardul amachand mangaldas so will be getting like you know sometimes 50000 80000 Uh, emails in a month for internships right and they don't have any process through, through which they can actually go through all these cvs and all these mails and reply to them or select the right candidates out of them now these many people are competing now if you want to really stand out and get those 13 one of those 30 internship slots in a given office of a law firm in a particular city in a particular month the competition is fierce you have to stand out you have to figure out how you're going to get that and that's just internship right it is equally crazy when you have to get a job so if there are if you are trying to bag up pre placement offer from one of these law firms at a given point of time maybe there are 30 40 interns 15 interns and out of that only two people or you know one person sometimes would be getting the job like they will be offered a job and you are literally like competing with like 1 is to 20 kind of ratio or even more or little less maybe sometime maybe 1 is to 50 and you have to stand out basically you have to be the best guy visibly clearly head and shoulders above the other 14 people or other 19 people how are you going to train yourself to do that i mean that's the question we deal with at i pleaders and law school courses this is what we want to work on like can we make you head and shoulders above the rest of the 19 and this is for students even for lawyers literally sometimes lawyers would come and say that you know i am the head of an invest legal head in a investment banking company which is a smaller investment com- banking company i want to go into a bigger one can you help me would your course help me because this is and it helps because in the end of the day the principles remain the same no matter what a big job you are aiming for because you know you have to create your cv it's like even if you are whoever you are you are aiming for something bigger you have to make that cv you have to impress certain people maybe for a fourth year law student they have to impress a few senior associates in certain law firms but for somebody who is a who is looking to get a general counsel role they have to impress certain different people certain lawyers certain ceos or certain presidents of banks whatever like different people have different uh, category of people to impress but in the end it's the same thing like in the next one yeah. are, are you going to impress 30 people with your knowledge with the kind of intellectual output that you deliver out there in the market 
it could be the articles you have written maybe you have to publish your article in economic times or wherever that would carry the weight where they'll be reading maybe you are interacting them with them with them on linkedin maybe you are mailing them maybe you are meeting them for informational interviews or whatever like it depends on uh, maybe you are finding the right mentors it is always the same process no matter at which level of your career you are at and that's what we work on along with studying like you know if you want to be a great lawyer there is a lot of soft skills there are aspects of uh, this networking writing publishing that we really focus on and we saw that that goes a long way in training people yeah i think that discovery with uh, giving people writing assignments which we started earlier in our diploma in entrepreneurship administration and business laws uh, so that that led us to a, a whole new set of ideas because when people started writing articles they started discovering their own research skills and they got they they got better with expressing their uh, ideas around law their arguments framing them their analysis of law all that started improving and then somewhere down the line we came up with this uh with the i oh, think you want to stop me for a moment i think that was a game changer you know the idea was that when i saw looking back at what made me if any good a lawyer at what what improved my me as a as a effective not only a lawyer but as somebody who can get things done and i saw that the biggest benefit of my law school education was that in the first year they gave us five projects to write which was like a mountain breaking on on my head like how can i write five articles five projects of 5000 word each with footnoting with a certain quality no plagiarism no copy pasting how can i write this and i did write at the end of that semester i was i wrote five projects and i got good marks from it and then it became easier and easier over time to write such 5000 word essays right and the more you do it the more i did it at least i my research became better my knowledge became better at least those things were i was an expert on those things that i wrote and then i saw the same thing happening with interns like if they will come and write articles they would become they will start you know gathering knowledge in those areas right we saw our seniors also doing that our batchmates doing that they will take an area keep writing articles on that area and over time they will develop some serious expertise on it and they later on went on to specialize in these things in their career also and that made it made it me clear that for the law studying process has to be coupled with research and writing that's one of the best ever way of teaching somebody how to think how to research how to become a better lawyer i mean adding that adding writing articles and uh, you know the feedback process i think that has been really amazing but one thing was in when you doing courses with nujs we could not give feedback because the nujs faculty member has to check the assignment and give feedback which was a little difficult but now that we are giving in our own courses that kind of feedback it's a weekly process so you write an article you get feedback and you write another one and you publish we help you with publishing i mean that i think has been a game changer what would you say true so i already shared that you know this this was so when people start writing articles then they could actually use law in a in different ways they could uh, argue they could analyze they could find what is consistent to the law what is not consistent they could find connections with of law with real life with business situations all of that which was earlier not possible earlier what what happens is that you read the statute book so you see okay this is what the statute says so there is this huge struggle when it comes to applying what the statute says to real life so that started getting bridged okay and this the the aspect of writing articles and then uh, publishing them in different places also enabled them enabled people to be natural uh, naturally show, uh, showcasing their newly acquired expertise okay and people who did this over time got uh, got better and better and you know people started interacting with them sometimes asking them questions about certain things and we came to know that 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 people more that everyone can do this and and acquire specialized understanding of law and and i think that was really a breakthrough and next we moved on then to uh, to introduction of the ipleaders club which was a mentorship platform which is a mentorship platform designed to 
uh, enable people. So, so people have a mentor who's got three to four years more, uh, three to four years of practice experience in case they're students or in case they are practitioners, then the mentor is an expert in an area they want to get to, or they are, you know, they are basically the mentor is somebody someone who is somebody, in a position. Sorry, somebody who's ahead of the curve. I'm just saying, yeah. there, it has to be somebody who's ahead of the curve, like somebody. Yeah. Who's four years ahead of you who can mentor right. and this is something you can copy yourself like find mentors at least one mentor or ideally like you can find mentors in different areas two three of them four of them who can who are actually ahead of you three four years and they have no interest in you in the way that they're going to give you a job or something or they are trying to hire you but they are interested in your development because they like you and they want you to succeed and that kind of people when you can go back to them and get their feedback and get their mentorship, it works amazingly. Right. And we so so we started not only providing mentors to people, but also training them on how they can on their own get new mentors and how can they get information about different kinds of career options and what is required for them to be eligible for that career option to apply for jobs in those careers and then to succeed in them. So that we did by introduction of something called an informational interview, which is very common in the Ivy League universities in the US. And we brought that here to, to the area of law. Okay. And, uh, and I personally find this very useful because it has been, we have ourselves been uh, finding out about different kinds of businesses uh, and problems, different people face with law through similar processes. So, uh, the utility of this is very high okay and and then we also started training people on in the yeah, i just want to add something that you know those who are listening please go and find out what is an informational interview and how to do it i don't want to cover too much of it it's already 850 but you yeah. got to find this out on your own like just google how to do an informational interview and do one or two of them and see how it is like it's going to change your it can change your career we have had students who have done an inter, uh, you know, informational interview with a lawyer and later on, like six months down, the lawyer has actually hired them saying, that, you know, or, or connected them with opportunities which they would not have gotten on their own. When and that was like their first informational interview ever. Yeah. I mean, you did imagine you did one information interview and, but that's like, you it's not that good, but that's what happened. Yeah. I, yeah but you got to do more than one. That's yeah. how it's recommended yeah now that like let's let's move on from this and what i really want to say is that if there are a number of things you have to do to become a better lawyer and most of the people are not doing anything beyond their uh, college curriculum or if they're working then they're doing their work and they're too busy there needs to be a system you follow that okay i'm going to spend at least one hour a day and becoming a better lawyer and trust me i have seen law firm partners doing this people who have started their law firms extremely busy having a roaring practice but they spend time on themselves to become a better lawyer and that's how they have come where they are and so they know the value of it so you have to set aside time for yourself to train yourself and to make yourself better abhita i want to uh, you to talk about the dream job bootcamp program we had a lot of amazing learnings from it we graduated very few people from it but whatever we did, we learned a lot. Would you like to share the experience of what happened and how did we said you come and for three months into our office, you work with us for three months, do whatever we ask you to do. In the end of it, you will get a good law firm job, the kind of job that you, you are asking for, provided you do what we ask you to do. And it happened. And some of them actually did not do all of the things we asked them to do and still landed amazing jobs. You want to share about it? Abhi? Yeah. So, uh, Although, yeah, speak, keep uh, adding in, keep filling in and expanding the conversation wherever you feel necessary. So the Dream Job Bootcamp was designed uh, as a th three month, it's designed as a three month program where every week, so there are 12 weeks and every week people have a fixed task list and one area on which they focus. Okay. And all this that we do, the writing assignments, informational interviews, uh, all of the networking, acquiring specialized uh, specialized knowledge on a particular area of law and then then expressing it through your articles all of this is concentrated together into a three month power pack program where you come to our delhi office and you work for easily eight to ten hours every day 
okay and you're working on your cv improving it adding people onto your linkedin profile it's basically you go all guns blazing okay and uh, two of the people who participated in that we took very very few people because there it required a lot of personal uh, attention and mentoring you cannot make a simple one size formula for uh, in this program so the people who did it they really there were so many things they said like uh, ramanuj you want to share about some of the experiences you had one person for example got uh, a job with uh, a top ip law firm based in delhi and the managing partner of that firm uh, told me that that he can actually see how she's head and shoulders above everybody else who was applying and there were many final year students who had applied there for a job and uh, and usually that firm takes you only if you are doing a 3 month assessment internship that person was given a 1 month assessment internship and in one week or nine days she was confirmed and uh, and her just imagine you for a moment you go for an assessment internship through our program and they like your work so much that they say that you know you don't you don't need to complete your assessment internship just join okay in nine days from a one month assessment internship now that that is the power of training yourself systematically for something like towards a certain end however i want to add something more which was the, which i found amazing abhi that you shared this with me the managing partner called back and said do you have more people like this please send more yeah and that that's that's a fantastic thing right so what is it that what did you do to train these people oh in 3 months and less than 3 months i think uh, this person you are talking about she was a graduate of kiit law school and she did not she was a graduate of nusrl uh, it took her i think 7 days less than 3 months or something so 2 2 months 3 weeks okay so what was, what did you train her how did you train her so uh, one of the things that really helped was actually so i gave her a lot of writing work i gave her three four types of tasks including expanding her linkedin profile sending invitations to people adding adding people who are senior to her in the profession and then also uh, gave her a lot of writing work and initially what used to happen was she would get stuck and would not know what to write and then when i actually started giving her feedback uh, she and then she could observe me finalize her articles she could see me do my the one the work i was doing for our uh, own courses and she could see different kinds of ways in which we think and then she started applying those to herself okay and what happens is that people get whenever they write or they fail to write they get caught up in different kinds of emotions and they give up it's anxiety cluelessness confusion all of that but what she learned was that how to stick on and what are the ways in which to inquire so it was never an emotional challenge anymore for her over a period of time what happened was she could view a problem as a legal problem then research in the right direction and find answers okay so then what happens is that when a law firm partner comes across such a person he can actually experience that this is a very mature person and who who has who is very highly trained in thinking and providing solutions they that person can be given a task this person will do the work well comprehensively all of that otherwise when they meet uh, a fresher otherwise they will be like uh, they will have to train the fresher the fresher will be like i don't know what to do how to start then they will not come back with work so all that he didn't have to deal with in this case in fact today i asked a friend of mine yeah mm -hmm. carry on carry on so i asked a friend of mine today uh, our a batchmate of ours that do you want interns would it help uh, would it increase your productivity she said no okay and i was surprised in our we we have so many interns and it always helps us no matter uh, no matter how many interns we have and now it's like we have 20 interns that is also not enough they always end up contributing but there was a time when we did not find it to be the case because we did not know how to actually uh, you know make work happen through uh, through involve involvement of interns now but what she said expresses the real thing that when you have an intern you have to spend so much time in training somebody and by the time you train them the one month is over so if you get a trained intern however work can get simplified but people have to actually experience it to know it now this is for every law student here who is listening that you know this 
kind of training and development is possible for you and that will alter the way people perceive you up to there quickly that the those uh, law firms which have and law firm partners who have hired our students now i have an arrangement for with several of them that i say that you know i'll be giving you a trained research intern okay this is a research assistant somebody who has been trained by us and that person will assist you for 3 months or 6 months online they don't have to go they won't come to your office they will work online and whatever research you have let's say you are writing articles you are doing any research you have some research to figure out for your uh, business the law firm partners always have you know there maybe a new area is coming up they want to research learn more put out a white paper write an article give an interview about it maybe they are being maybe they are appearing on tv talking about it they need research so i said i'll give you a research intern who is trained and they are ready to pay that person to work from home right because yeah. that is the value of a trained person and these people will have a they'll have they can work like they, they'll get a job just like this they'll get recommendations from these lawyers when they try to find a job they'll just it's 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 no no brainer it's like very easy for them now once they have done this research internship and even for the law firm partners or uh, the lawyers uh, they for them it's like a great help to find such people because identifying those right people is very difficult for them and they come back to us like we have a number of law firms who who said that you know send us two internships uh, two interns in july four interns in august like that they have given us slots that you know every month you send us these many interns from your students not like any random person but your students that you can recommend so we look at people doing the exercises every week we see how good they are based on that how prepared they are to do a certain internship and based on that we recommend them to law firms to go and intern and that leads to a very like they are just there there is no other process we just send their cv and said please accept these people and they just take it on the face value and take those interns because that is the kind of training we have been giving and sometimes people ask me you know what nujs recognition is not there university is not there i say that you know industry is recognizing us they want our students because they are highly trained what else do you want yeah okay so you know we have got a bunch of questions from many different people and it's 9 o'clock so we might want to answer some of those questions so we have harshit bajpai asking sir is it possible to join the diploma in advance contract on december 2018 or i have to wait for next july is it affiliated to wb nujs no harshit it is not affiliated to nujs these are courses that we directly offer on our own there is no university certification law seco diplomas are all offered without any university certification however like i said that these are recognized by the in- industry and you will be learning you don't it's not like your certificate will get you into a in- internship or a job but, but the fact that what you know will ensure that you get get an internship or a job so that is what you should be focusing on on learning and developing your skills on drafting okay and you can join the course i think every once every we have a lot of people who have already started like joining the next batch i guess we'll be starting another batch in the month of august or maybe you know maybe september so we'll be announcing a batch for contact drafting again very soon wana dhruv is asking i think now lawsico can start mbl courses due to new amendments harshit we are not interested in giving any degrees as called certificates or diplomas what is important for us is that we can create good lawyers and that is what is going to be our usp that people come to us they learn how to do the work which they cannot learn anywhere else so for example if you take our uh, contract drafting course there are many contract drafting courses that you will find even from universities for like 3000 rupees 5000 rupees right but you will not find a single course which will every week will train you will make you give, will give you two exercises every week and after you do the exercises give you feedback on them we will tell you how to improve so that next week you can draft better contracts you can create negotiation strategies you can create you know you can foresee issues in a certain contract and you can you know now uh, come up with language that will deal with those issues so that's the kind of training that is available 
and uh, that's where we want to focus that's what you want to do through divyansh garg is asking law seeko diploma content my materials are good but i find very hard to get knowledge and it gets most difficult to get everything missing blackboard sessions abhi they want to say something about this what is it what okay. is a blackboard ha huh. just read the question he finds it difficult to learn from online material the material is very good but i find it hard to get the knowledge okay uh, divyansh garg is he in any of our courses abhi the divyansh garg he must be i don't recall sometimes people attend one session and not others okay so very hard to get knowledge and it gets most difficult to get everything because there is no blackboard session is what is saying the sessions are uh, interactive so it's a face to face learning so there is no whiteboard or something that we use so we'll figure out an alternative way so that they have um, i don't know he wants something to be written on the blackboard in a standard style but the thing is if we follow the pedantic way then again we do, we don't know if people can use that skill the same problem of participation happens so you learn something and it's there in your brain but you can't use it so we are doing it through exercise by exercise and my suggestion is why we do it like this is so that you have a way to use it now if you can't learn something please stop and ask us questions you can we solve questions we extend the session i've been doing that so many times we'll take your queries on phone wherever you want until you have actually learned it and i have been doing this there are a lot of students who ask us questions afterwards and we address all their doubts okay and maybe we will discover new ways to actually impart this to you so please ask us these questions wherever you get stuck ask us a specific question so that we can actually serve you there okay so uh, he is also saying law students like me and my friends taking this diploma course genuinely found very hard to get and getting boring without teaching us first meetings are only conducted for just 40 minutes for big class okay i'll take this feedback and then i'll speak to him and address this yeah what is the gap that is being faced figure out whatever problem you are facing this should not be how it is but i'll tell yes. you some reasons you might be finding it hard initially but it's not something that you should be worried about like it is it will be hard initially you are probably doing a course where you are one week or two week into the course so keep doing it like trust us we don't have to teach you the basics first we'll give you exercises and we'll teach you we want to see what you do and then we'll give you feedback and next week it will become a little easier and the week after that it will become a little even more easier and over time you will see that after two or three months it will completely change Now it will become a cake walk for you, and we'll keep giving you more and more difficult exercises over time. But don't worry about that. It's the hard part about learning law that you have to think, you have to research, you have to read up. That is how it is. That is how the legal profession is. I cannot give it to you on a platter because that will not be doing you any favor. That it can't. Be, it can't be entertainment. That is the thing. It can't be necessarily enjoyable or entertainment. It involves effort. So if you are stuck, please let us know because we want to make it as easy or usable as possible at the same time i cannot guarantee any comfort in the process okay yeah it's not about being comfortable it will be hard but you have to engage in that process like you know if i tell you hey this is a this is a contract draft this okay this is a con and you have never drafted a contract so first time you are seeing a template and you are told that okay these are the issues that on, on which you need to work it's going to be hard it's for the first time you are doing it right if i tell you everything hey this is how to do this and then you do it then it's it's mechanical what is what is that you are we need you to think we need you to come up with solution so we would not give you the solution first we'll give you the exercise first and maybe you will fail at doing the exercise but you will do something and come to the class then we will something you will submit right you will do whatever you can you have spent one hour two hour thinking about the problem then you submitted whatever solution you could come up with and then we teach you this is how to do and it so what is hap what happens in the sessions is usually i have an opportunity to speak to each and every person and we take three submissions and we give them feedback on the exercise so whoever submits we take three submissions from them and give detailed feedback and that is relevant for everyone because they see new ways of drafting contracts but so you need to participate in that if you haven't been 
and ask us questions if you get stuck because we are interested in you completing the exercise yeah absolutely you can call us also and we'll talk to you right but yeah. first you try that exercise on your own and then you come back right then we will discuss how to how to make it you know we'll make sure you understand and don't worry this is just the beginning in the beginning when you are learning something so different you are not used to learning in this way so it will be tough it will be difficult it will be uncomfortable but have patience keep doing it give us a chance give us your one year time keep doing this and don't uh, get scared by the toughness of it this is how you become a good lawyer i'm sorry but this is the process you have to go through okay have patience next question we have kunal chandriyani asking does your diploma courses refer students to help get internships yes absolutely we do somadipa we help uh, people to get internships so this is kunal chandriyani asking do we help to get internships yes absolutely we do if you do a good job we see your performance in your um, exercises how you are participating in the class are you able to depending on how prepared you are we'll send you for different internship that you are ready for somo dipai is asking sir can't you please provide us with hard copy absolutely we are providing hard copy we're providing you within 90 days yeah so after 90 days we'll send it to you after you join the course we'll share with you the hard copy material okay so absolutely nothing to worry about that kunal chandriyan is asking again sir studying long term courses completely online becomes difficult can you design books <laughs> it doesn't work right it's again like i give you a manual and you ask you to read it right and uh, we are giving you a book like we are giving you the hard copy material uh, we will send it to you the book will give it to you right when you do the course but that alone will not help you need to attend classes it's again like reading and memorizing a swimming memorial but you have to get into the water and get trained by a coach and you have to learn to float you know you have you will be splashing water and like you know initially you will feel like you are drowning which is happening to some of the students like they are saying so it happens but you got to engage with the process if you go to the swimming pool every day after maybe 30 days you will be swimming and you will love it right so that that's something that is a process you have to go through that uh that, is, that will help in building the consistency required also as a professional you have to do something repetitively over a period of time to have that reliability got it hari prasad is asking sir does technology course in which software licensing are also made a part of syllabus whether will be guided as to how to draft software licensing contract yes yes it's there absolutely Just covered it for the last batch for the current ongoing batch yeah there is so three kinds of software license right it's one of the first things you learn when you join our technology law course okay somodipa is asking yes exactly what i'm trying to tell everything online it's become tough okay so what here I to say something uh abhira you can also tell me after i speak on this that you know if we had to offer these classes in a physical classroom i mean i know you want the hard copy which you are giving right it is not like we are not providing with the hard copy reading material we will provide it to you but online classes enables us to let's say bring an expert who is an expert in his area now that person is not going to come and take a class or very rarely they will do so or they don't have time to pre- but some you know uh, experts become accessible when we do it online and that's one of the biggest benefits and abhi they want to say something about this what is the question uh, i couldn't hear the full question everything online it becomes tough so mudipa is saying see you can come and do a dream job boot camp if you have time we'll train you personally for 3 months that's not a problem we've tried all methods the thing is such that now whichever way you are comfortable you can use it you can come and do a dream job boot camp for 3 months if that is what you want to do you want offline learning that's yeah but go to delhi and do it that's the whole yeah yeah so choose what you want all methods are now that's what we are doing we are trying to make it uh, friendly for multiple kinds of people who want to learn in different ways so those who prefer hard copy there is a hard copy available whatever we did you know if we gave books also we were told that okay can we have live sessions 
so we have that now so every yeah, so life we, sessions is critical without i mean we realize that live sessions is making all the difference in training the only thing is these live sessions are a lot harder than our classrooms because in the classrooms a teacher has to come and teach alone and you can sit unprepared here we are not yeah. doing that so uh, it will involve will... the class listen to sit back and listen what the teacher is saying but sorry that if we do that then we will not be able to run excellent courses right for that we need you to come prepared we need you to read we need you to do the exercise and come it will be hard but it will be rewarding in the end of the day we will be able to train you to the level that a law firm will say wow you really we really want to hire you or a company will say wow this is the kind of people you want to hire you are so much better maybe a what a first year associate at the end of one year knows you already will go with go in with that much knowledge and maturity that is something we can assure and ensure yes i'll give you an example what happened was in the mna class uh, the first class i gave them a situation and i said choose the diff we we explained to them the different kinds of ways mnas take place so we explained business transfer we explained asset purchase we explained share sale and then i gave a situation straight away my explanation was barely 10 to 15 minutes they could understand the concept but then they had to straight away deal with the situation that in this situation what will be the best i explained the court approved merger also because you have to start facing that because i I've, i've seen people who are toppers who done everything they know everything yet when a situation comes they are not willing to uh, you know they are not comfortable with it with applying their knowledge so that's what we got to bridge and that only i think gets bridged this way but if you don't understand something we are willing to help that is there so please ask us bother us do whatever we are always available ramanu over to you yeah got it so thank you so much i think uh, you know we we have come to to the end of the session more or less uh, if uh, uh, if unless there is something as a parting message you want to share with there like how do in this age and time how does a lawyer train themselves what are the different like you know what if, if in a few sentences you want to share what can they keep doing and improve themselves and become a good lawyer extraordinary lawyer i have seen a lot of lawyers who when you ask them a question they will answer with respect to what are the deals they have worked on. okay but the thing is that you may have worked on five deals that doesn't stop you from knowing about thousand other kinds of deals and being able to do them really from being able it doesn't stop you but, but i have seen people when ask them questions and they have good experience two years three years they worked in a law firm they'll say no i worked on this side of it so i answer only this side of it my only uh, parting note is that you are really capable of the whole inside out from the different parties perspectives let nothing stop you okay and why i am so you know emphatic about this is that for some time i worked in dry legal for one year right and for some time i thought that that we can only create courses based on what i know and then we started using that same method on other areas which we don't know but we started actually learning about them and then now i am just willing and interested to know about all of the about other areas one by one okay and so that we can actually apply our, this knowledge that enables us to find out experts to teach if i just go to an expert and say hi can you teach this i'll be they, they might just get bored because i am not actually talking to them from what they understand i need to have a certain degree of expertise myself to talk to them about something and invite them to teach and this applies to any lawyer like you speak to a client you've done an sha with a domestic investor and now tomorrow you have a foreign investor you got to be able to know that okay you need to do this even if you've not done something before okay so feel free to stretch out and swing out like that and our exercises enable you also to do that that is what i'm adding Okay, even if you don't do our courses, don't hesitate. I mean, just just be clear that you can do work in a variety of situations, none of which you've experienced earlier. I think uh, great. So we are going to put an end to the session here. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for listening to us. And those students who are having any problem anytime.
our phone lines are open we are available 24/7 for you just give us a call we will help you out don't worry about it thank you very much all the best thank you for joining thank us. you everyone yes good see night. you see you tomorrow